Hello and thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show. From Arthur Miller's The Crucible to a play about an African country on the edge of civil war. And a creation inspired by the Delhi bus gang rape performed by survivors of sexual violence. Today's guest is a fearless, groundbreaking director and playwright. She's brought her adaptation of August Strindberg's Miss Julie to Paris. She's relocated the action from a Swedish Count's estate in the 1870s to a farm in South Africa 20 years after the end of apartheid. Let's meet Yael Faber. Yael, welcome to the show. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Just to start with, what does a 19th century Swedish play have to say about the South Africa of today? When I read it at first, the original, very little, um, but there's a genius narrative device inside the Strindberg piece. It was banned for the first year after he'd written it in his own country, and I wanted to get to the heart of what had made it so shocking at the time, because transgressing class boundaries is no longer, uh, it no longer has that same kind of stunning and shocking event. Um, and. Uh, and so as I started to unwrap what was at the core of it, it just becomes possible that two people can actually say everything that's impossible to say to each other um, after this moment where they're intimate with one another. And to me, that opens up the, the Pandora's box that I think theatre needs to be. It needs to be the moment where we witness people saying things that we don't dare say or do in our real lives. OK, well, let's take a look at Miss Julie. a taster of Miss Julie, which is showing here in Paris at La Bouffe du Nord. Does it make a difference, the audience on the night? I mean, what's the Paris audience like? How does it compare with others? It was received very wonderfully last night. Um, you know, I think we live in a very particular time today where violence and questions of who, what land belongs to whom and everything that's at the core of this piece, it seemed to resonate very strongly with the audience. In the original, Miss Julie, Christine is John's fiance, not his mother. Why the change? It was very important to um, somehow illustrate that tension that is so implicit inside John's journey. If it was his fiance, the stakes are much lower for for him, um, and so um, by making her, by making um, Christine his mother, there was the possibility that I could show how his loyalty becomes divided between. A South Africa that insists that people continue to wait, like the older generation may, and the younger generation that have reached a, a boiling point of waiting. Um, and in Miss Julie, we're left with this question, how far are the new generation going to be able to reinvent their narratives? Can John and Julie and South Africa move forward from the past? How hopeful are you? You know, a lot of people, when they see the work, they say to me it's a very pessimistic view. Um, and in fact, I think it's a love story. Um, what what the, the the device that I'm hoping um, becomes very resonant for the audience that I think is in a way at the, the core of the Strindberg is what would be the possibility of these two human beings if they were able to both transcend their narratives. And so um, for me that's where the hope lies is um, as time passes and these core narratives um, begin to dilute, um, perhaps that kind of reconciliation becomes possible but these are not easy or glib things. And you were born and raised in Johannesburg and you spent your teenage years in the city's market theatre, witnessing this sort of birth of protest theatre. Talk to us about that time a bit. You know, the birth of protest theatre would have been a little earlier, but um, I was certainly, um, you know, I, I like to often refer to the fact that when I was six years old or five years old, I went to see Annie um, at an all-white theatre. My parents took me for my birthday and I remember coming out and seeing smoke on the horizon and asking them what it was. And 
it was the Soweto uprising and being very struck that we had spent the evening um, anaesthetizing ourselves. I mean, I didn't think of it in that way when I was five or six, but I, I was very struck by the, the disparity. And then at 15 years old, sitting in the market theater and watching what felt like a, a place where the only possibility for the truth being told to me was happening in front of me. And I, I was very struck by um, what theatre is capable of doing. It can either anaesthetise or it can wake you up. And um, that, I think that's when my journey began. And one example of that is um, the award-winning play that you wrote um, after the 2012 gang rape on a bus in Delhi. It's called Near Baya. Um, it's based on the testimonies of survivors of sexual violence. And let's take a look. That was from near Baia. You got a remarkable reaction from the people who saw that. Tell us about that. Near Baia has travelled around the world and it's been um, some of the most moving moments I've had in my career, just witnessing how audiences have responded. Um, we always have uh, talkbacks afterwards and um, invite the community that has just watched the piece to participate um, in what we consider to be um, the possibility to break one's silence. Um, so at the core of the work is really that um, sexual violence becomes possible as long as people can act with impunity. Um, and when you protect um, the perpetrator with your silence, that change cannot happen. And so we've witnessed some remarkable moments of people opening up and speaking for the first time after the work. And that's really what we wanted to do was to generate an ongoing flame of righteous rage um, in the face of the kind of statistics around the world for sexual violence, not specifically in India, but everywhere we travel, we have the same response. There is an extraordinary demographic that is profoundly affected by sexual violence. I mean, creating this play was quite a journey for you. Um, it took you to India and then back to the stage where you um, put on this piece. Tell us about how you got involved in it in the first place. Purna Jagannathan, who's a, one of the actors in the piece, she reached out to me the morning after Jyoti Singh Pandey was attacked um, and was hospitalised and the streets of India were rising in protest. Um, I had posted something on Facebook and she responded. I'd posted something about um, the attack. And she reached out to me saying she'd seen my work before um, and I was needed there. She just said, come, we need you to come and make a peace with us. And so she paid for myself and my five-year-old daughter to go and spend time first in Bombay and then um, three months later when our producers came on board, we went to Delhi and made the work in six weeks. And tell us, do real events demand a different approach from fictional ones when, um, when working in theatre? Um, you know, for me, theatre is always about telling the truth. Um, and so... Um, I, I, I have a similar demand from um, the mandate for me is always about um, being fearless in, in, in um, confronting the audience uh, through tenderness, through uh, acts of violence with what is really happening around them. But to work with uh, testimony and testimonial theatre, and I usually write from those testimonies that I gather, um, which is a specific genre of kind of, uh, of documentary theatre. Um, there's an enormous level of accountability. You've been entrusted with these stories. And, um, you know, I really what it's about is listening um, and then honouring whatever that core truth was, pulling the potent metaphors out of the story to create some kind of an event from those testimonies through which the community witnessing it can metabolise um, that as a reality. You have so many things going on at the same time, it seems to me. You're also directing um, a play by Lorraine Hansbury at the National Theatre in London, Le Blanc, until the 4th of May. It's about an African country on the edge of civil war. Um, how do you tackle violence on stage? 
Again, truthfully, I think, you know, as soon as you're doing anything for effect, as soon as you're doing it, um, you have to really interrogate the reasons that you're representing violence on stage. And for me, if it doesn't live inside a grid that resonates to a larger political question, then it's gratuitous. And then you're feeding the beast instead of looking at the beast. Um, there's an appetite for violence, and um, it's very, very easy to fall um, on the other side of feeding that appetite. So I, I'm... I'm very discerning. I take a lot of care about what I do represent. But but when it is necessary, for example, in Nirbaya, you don't want to sanitize the reality and you don't want to exploit it. You don't want to create some kind of voyeurism. And so, you know, again, theater is a series of symbols and metaphors. It's a remarkable ritual in which we think we've seen something. But I think the art is to do just enough that it unleashes the audience's deeper understanding and imagination. And so very often in Nurbaya press or um, audience would comment on having actually witnessed the gang rape. Of course they didn't. We will never know what Jyoti Singh Pande went through on that bus that night. It's highly symbolic what we create, but there has to be just enough that you do not allow it to fall into the strange kind of mythologizing we have around sexual violence that it somehow is erotically um, resonant or attached. The one has nothing to do with the other. Rape is an act of violence, not sex. You have so many things, um, as I said, going on. What are you working on now? What are your next projects to come? My next project is The Bacchae. I'm adapting um, the Greek tragedy, The Bacchae, in South Africa. I'll be going there in June to create a new production. OK, yeah, Alfaba, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for here having on France me. 24. It's been a real pleasure. Now, Miss Julie is on in Paris at La Bouffe du Nord until the 16th of April. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.